and welcome to September's Indiana Learning Partnership event, Fall into Reading. Today we have Melissa Gill with us. Melissa Gill is an instructional specialist at the Wabash Valley Education Center. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Morgan. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation. So hello everyone, I'm, like Morgan said, I'm an instructional specialist at Wabash Valley. Some of my training includes uh, Keys to Literacy Letters and of course M.A. Rooney and Orton Gillingham. But today I want to focus in on what is going on, what is the buzz with Scarborough's Rope, why is everybody talking about it right now? Many of us have started investigating the world of science of reading, structured literacy, and so this is also spinning in those conversations that we are having. So what exactly is Scarborough's rope and why is it important? What do we use it for? Why do we need it? Um, what place does it have in our instruction? So great questions. And I would like to break that down for you today. So back, um, I believe it was in the early 90s, Dr. Hollis Scarborough put together this visual and the visual was actually put together for parents at the time because she was trying to explain the complexity of reading and what all the components were. Now, from what I hear, she is actually in Southern Florida retirement community living the best life. So thank you, Dr. Hollis, for all that you've done. And here we are today where this is coming back out again and everyone is using it to understand the complexity of reading. And so I am so excited to bring this to you today so that you can understand exactly um, how to move instruction forward in your classroom. And the great thing about this visual that Dr. Hollis put together, it's not overwhelming. And you've probably seen it put together with pipe cleaner sticks. Um, the pipe cleaner sticks are originally what she used. But nowadays it's on bulletin boards with the colored paper from, I hear, the local Dollar General. But I don't want it to just be a visual that you have up in your hallways or in your classrooms. I want it to be something that you think about uh, when you go to do your lesson planning. And then even if you're having those tough conversations with parents about literacy. So taking a look at this, this is what you need a screenshot of today. This is what you need to focus in on. If you'll take a look at the strands, we have the blue strand, which is all about word recognition, right? Right here is where we find the phonological awareness piece, the decoding piece, sight recognition. We are exploding right now in education with the word recognition piece. You are probably hearing so much about M.A. Rooney and Orton Gillingham and the training behind that. And in those trainings that I provide, I love to emphasize to teachers that it's all about a process. It's not about a product. So no matter which product you use, it's all about the main components and how you are teaching your phonics instruction. And one of those components, of course, is making sure that it's systematic, making sure it's explicit. I know I started in education over 20 years ago and we moved into a balanced literacy approach. And just taking a look at that and comparing my word work with the word work that I did before I left, um, well, actually I'm still in education, right? Um, as an educator working with other teachers, but the nice thing is now is I get to travel around and work with so many of you, but also to leaving the classroom, you know, thinking about before I stepped out, I was able to provide those multimodality, those opportunities for students to practice phonics and word recognition in different ways. Um, so taking uh, into consideration sight recognition, those high frequency words, it was so popular to just pop out those flashcards and have the kids whip through those, right? And then, or giving them as an intervention and timing how fast the kids could learn those. And in the bottom line is, you know, their working memory can only hold so much information before it's overloaded. And so those kids who maybe did well initially, we have seen a gradual decrease or slope um, as they move through the grades. And that's why it's because their working memory is overloaded, can only handle so much information uh, before you crash and burn, right? So now we're at that point where we're understanding um, when we're talking about words, when we're talking about um, providing phonics, we're talking not skill and drill, we're talking multi-modality, we're talking multi-sensory. They're moving, they're engaging. We have orthographic mapping going on in the classroom. 
And if you're not sure about what those terms mean, please reach out. Um, I have no problem helping you or sending you resources. We're looking at making sure the alphabetic principle, we're celebrating that when kids realize that, you know, the sounds and the letters, they all mean something. We're helping them crack a code. And that's what the word recognition strand is all about. And if you notice the rope, we have the blue and we have the orange, and we notice that they have to all tie in together, right? I like to think of this as a one times one. One times one equals one. We need both components, the lower um, blue strand and the upper orange strand. And usually sometimes when I go into trainings, we have this mindset, the word recognition piece, okay, that's K2, you take care of that and we'll take care of the orange strand in three, six. And, and that is not how this works. This is all about working ground up, making sure that we're creating skilled readers. If you take a look at the strand, we need every single strand to be strong, right? Nothing is frayed. And that is the great thing about what Dr. Hollis has put together for us. It's helping us realize that every single one of these strands is instrumental in making a difference in the lives of our kids and creating skilled readers. So they're just as important as the other. We need every piece. And so if we have something out of place, one of the strands is frayed, frayed, right? That's where we need to go back and dig in. So we've talked about the word recognition piece. I wanna focus in on language comprehension. And if you haven't read it, I highly recommend shifting the balance because it is a very easy read and it's comfortable and it helps you make um, those changes. Um, it helps you think about and reflect on what needs to happen in your classroom. It brings out how important oral comprehension is, um, being able to speak and talk and relate to one another, to be able to use that vocabulary, to bring out the background knowledge and have those classes or those conversations going in our classrooms, how vital that is to student growth and development so that when they get to the upper three through six, they're able to make connections to that text, that content area text that we're exposing them to. And so having, I know when I taught first grade, it was kind of um, the, <laughs> the frame of mind was that we would not spend too much time on social science and social studies content. And we look back at that now and realize that's when the vocabulary was taking place, those rich conversations um, were supposed to be happening during those times. So we were encouraged later on to bring in all of those read alouds, which are so, so crucial. Having that read aloud time, my biggest question during my trainings, I asked teachers, how often are you reading aloud a day? I highly encourage you to have at least two or three read alouds a day and allow students to experiment with the vocabulary and talk with each other and have rich conversations and that is all part of building up comprehension. And then taking a look at the background knowledge, we absolutely need to have that, right? I mean, students aren't going to be able to understand passages later if we haven't built in background knowledge or provided opportunities for them to understand. So what does your background knowledge um, instruction look like? What do you provide for students? How do you front load? Are you creating anticipation guides? Um, what kind of materials are you providing for them so that they can understand what uh, the material that you're teaching? And then taking a look at syntax and the semantics, you know, the grammar part, you know, we need to explicitly teach the grammar and then don't forget the application piece. How are students applying it in their reading and writing? Are you having them find it? Are you having them write in a journal using uh, the lesson that you've taught for the day. Application, 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 not kill and drill, right? But explicit and systematic. Verbal reasoning, going through and making sure that we're talking about the figurative language, the inferences, the metaphors, and then literacy knowledge. How are you breaking down the genres? Um, are you looking at text structure? So powerful to pre um, preparing students for what they need to face in the upper grades. So what I love about this visual that um, 
Scarborough, a Dr. Hollis has put together is that it gives us a visual example of every component and how important every component is in classroom instruction. And we need every single one of these to create a skilled reader. So one of the things that I love to do when I'm working with teachers is I have them go through and think about, think about your block. What are you doing during your block of instruction? What does your literacy block look like? And we reflect. And I bring in my own examples from my classroom experiences, from administrative experience. You know, what did I see that worked well and what didn't? And a big part of this is also talking about those comprehension of strategies. Christina Smekins does an excellent job of talking about the thinking voice and the reading voice and how that applies um, as all of this together. I had a great time with you today, and I'm so appreciative of the opportunity to share this important work with you. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. I, Every time I hear about the reading rope, I learn something new. So thank you for sharing your expertise, and I am excited for everyone else to be able to uh, take something away from this as well. Me too, Morgan. Thank you. And, you know, I talked about shifting the balance. Another great one is no better, do better. Quick read. Okay. No better, do better. I don't think I've read that one. It's wonderful. And it's quick. We don't have time to mess around in education. Right. Oh, <laughs> no time to waste. <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me.